Hello everyone and welcome to ZP Productions. This is Richard here and today we'll be looking at this device here. This is the OC 4K T7 monitor for on-camera monitoring. So before we start, let me thank SL Revolution and OC for providing me this review set. Uh, you know, if you are looking to buy photographic or videographic equipment in Singapore, do look at the links below and, you know, visit them and purchase your items. If not, um, let me continue on this review here. This review will be split into three parts. And first part, we'll be talking about the physical dimensions of it. Second part, we'll be talking about the display. And lastly, we will talk about its video assist functions. And after that, I will talk about my opinions and pricing itself. So, let's talk about the physical dimensions of this uh, OC device. So, this OC device is you know, made of plastic. As you can see here, it's made of plastic itself. And it, it has a very nice screen. And you know, you see this joystick. Sadly, OC did not make a touchscreen out of this. So, everything is controlled by this joystick here, which is okay as long as you learn how to utilize it. Other than that, uh, let's look at the mounting points. It's top mounting point and bottom mounting point. This screen does rotate as required depending on how you mount it and then uh, the side here has the audio jack this allows you to monitor audio through the monitor itself as the HDMI do push monitor, do push audio in there's also an onboard speaker to allow you to hear the sounds that come into this monitor personally I would just disable it because it, kind, it feels kind of irritating there's an SD card slot here and though this card slot is not for recording this card slot is just mainly for upgrading of firmware and also loading of LUTs which I'll talk about it in the third section of this video and then let's look at the back now so at the back here you will see a few things firstly you will see the DC port this is provide this cable is actually provided by OC and it connects to a V-Log mount battery through the tab now this is really really useful it allows you to power this monitor for a really really long time next you will see this mount here this is for the mp f970 batteries this is one of the more common batteries you can get as long as you own any form of video led light or video cameras by sony you probably have this battery on hand okay this is actually the t7 version as you can see here there is two hdmi ports and this is where the sdi socket should go and uh, in the t7 version the two sdi which is in and out will go there and then lastly you will see the on off switch for this monitor so pretty much this is all the physical part of the monitor itself there are vents at a different part of the monitor to cool the monitor down but if not there's really nothing much to talk about the physical aspect of this monitor okay we talk about accessories a bit since we're talking about physical aspect firstly there is the you know these things for you to mount on top of the camera it is a ball head mount uh, i don't use it because i have a two-way i have a three-way mount that is i feel much more secure than this and i use it already for my black magic and then there's the adapter also provided so OC provides total of three items the adapter the DTAP cable and this for mounting on top of your camera itself okay so for video aspect that's about it and next we'll talk about the display now this display is really interesting it is a display rated at 3000 nits so 3000 nits is how bright if you ask uh, your iPhone is about 600 nits so this screen is a good five times brighter than your iPhone your average you know um, laptop is about 300 to 400 nits and so this screen is a good 10 times brighter than most LCD monitors out there and then if you look at most of the other monitors for on-camera uh, video assist uh, they are rated about anywhere from 500 nits to maybe 2000 nits itself so this is really bright and OC says that this is six times brighter I don't doubt that but you know rather than me talking on this let me show you a video that I did earlier on measuring this monitor and comparing it with other monitors itself so this is actually a test on how bright this OC screen 4K G7 or T7 screen actually is. So what we have here is the video assist by Blackmagic. And then this is the iPhone XR. What you have here is a i1 display. So this thing actually measures the brightness of the screen. Now OC claims that this screen has 3K of nits. So let's take a look. Firstly, this is the iPhone screen and let us now measure the iPhone screen. Now, if you look at the screen now, the iPhone measures at 563 nits, about there. Now, if you look at the video assist by Blackmagic, 
So this measures about 444, 443 nits. It's pretty bright actually. So it's quite similar to a mobile phone for the video assist. Now, as I said earlier, OC promises 3K and let's see whether does it approach 3K. So as I go closer and closer to the screen itself, as you can see, the numbers are actually increasing crazily. This is like 2,500 nits. Now, as, uh, this is where the issue is. This measuring device could not measure over 2.6K nits or 2.7K. So as I go really, really close, you will see that it approaches 2,600 and then it will just fall off. Now, this is where the device is overloaded. It could no longer measure. So what you can you see here is that the OC really delivers on the brightness. Now I think you have seen the comparison and really this monitor is impressive. It really clocks in at probably more than 3000 nits because my device could no longer measure it. Um, if not, you know, uh, this monitor is really so bright that I tried it today outdoor at around 10 a.m. And I could really use this monitor even when the sun is shining bright light on the monitor. It doesn't get washed out. I could see every detail without even a hood. So this is really, really impressive. Um, I, I don't think really there's not there's many monitors that could go as bright as this monitor here. No, okay, so other than just the brightness, the colors are also pretty good. So I did a, sm a short measurement and you know, REC color space is similar to sRGB. So this monitor covers about 86% to 90%, depends how you see it, of the color space. So in terms of color accuracy, it is there and it is quite good. I will talk about the software later and the software do allow you to do a slight calibration to this monitor to get the color that you want. Other than that, uh, this screen is a 1920 by 1200 screen. This is not just a Full HD screen. As you notice, the black bar below and the black bar on top, the Full HD is actually inside. Sadly, this is not a 4K screen, even though OC says that this is an OC 4K. But that being said, this monitor is bright, it's sharp, and it has decent colors. So I think it's really good enough for most purpose like gauging focusing and also seeing the scene itself. Okay, now we will enter the last part of this talking about this monitor, which is the software of this monitor, which is actually the most essential part of this whole review. So firstly, there is no touch screen, and so everything has to be done with this joystick. Pushing it up will allow you to do a zoom in up to four times and clicking it allows you to shift this zoom in around the screen. Okay. And then if push down and you will get the backlight and adjusting the backlight itself. This screen is really so bright at, and you can see that I'm currently doing this review at zero brightness. Uh, the next thing is that if you push the left and hold, you will launch the screens this monitor's menu itself. So the menu allows you to adjust the volume, which is the inbuilt speaker, as I said earlier, the backlight, the display rotation, you can lock it, and it also allows you to do anamorphic. So it allows you to de-squeeze the video on this monitor itself. This is definitely good if your camera do not have the function and you want to do a de-squeeze to know, see how it looks like. There's also a DSL scaling for some of the DSLs out there, and there is a status display. Now remember the two black bars, top and bottom, that is where the status displays are. Sadly, the status display don't really show much. It shows mainly the battery, as you can see here. It shows the battery in voltage, and then why is it connected through HDMI, and of course, what is the resolution it's connected at. So there's really nothing much to show in the status. I hope that they could show a bit more other stuff, but I don't really know what is there out there. Then this, is the, this monitor allows you to calibrate the monitor itself. This is not the LUT that you load to you know, see a log file. This is calibration of the monitor itself. You can actually calibrate it. And then the language of the monitor, the monitor info, and of course, firmware update through SD card slot and loading of your own personal LUT if you want to see a graded video before it gets graded. No, because sometimes log video is just too flat for you. And then lastly, factory reset. So uh, that is pretty much the main menu function, but the most important part of functions is the video assist functions. So if you just press left itself, you launch the sidebar menu and click it. Now, one thing, you really have to memorize how to use this joystick because it is not the most intuitive thing in this monitor itself. I do hope that they make it touch screen in the future, but really you have to do some sort of uh, memorizing and you once you get used to it, it is pretty fast. So we let's, let's, let's take a look at the various functions in this side menu here. Now this side menu is customizable. It's some sort of a quick menu and you can add new tools if you want. These are the various tools available. I won't be going through all of them because I'll just talk about what I think is important. Firstly, uh, if you use uh, 
lock file like me. So currently I'm shooting with uh, Fuji F lock. So this Fuji lock is actually quite grey. And so you may want to have it in a more graded look. And this monitor allows you to load LUTs for it. So uh, currency here is Fuji lock. And there is a lot of other LUT files that is available for you to use out of the box itself. If not, you can always load up your own user LUTs and then you know see your own graded video however you want it. Okay, so that is for the looks and then next is waveform. So this allows you to enable waveforms and waveforms allow you to have a very quick, quick understanding of where is bright and where is dark in the video itself. I think this is more important than histograms and uh, it's definitely more usable than most other monitoring tools itself. Waveforms are not available in every single you know, low price tool out there. In fact, my Blackmagic Video Assist from the 2016 version doesn't have it. Uh, a lot of the cheaper monitors from Fewer do not have it. Only the, you know, the later ones, like the LUT7 has it built in. So this is a bit more premium of a function. If you look at DSLR, only those that are like, uh, like the GH5 or the S1H with the new, you know, with the additional add-on pack has this additional waveform function, which I think is definitely more useful than histograms. I do not understand why cameras don't have it because it gives a really quick and good you know, reading on the whole scene. So uh, there is some things common to widgets like this. I call them widgets. Uh, there is the ability to set the size and the location and its opacity. So you can actually do such settings like increase and decreasing its opacity and changing its location around the screen. Allows you to you know, put wherever you want that is best for your own personal monitoring itself. Then uh, there is the things like false colors. So false colors itself, right, there is the standard false color from Spectrum. But you can also base it on the various log files to see where it's overexposed and where it's underexposed. So it's really useful. But sadly, there's no, there's not one for Fuji though. There's Canon, Panasonic, RAID. Yeah, there's none for Fuji, which is weird. Even though they have the uh, log files for it, the LUT files for it. Okay, then uh, focus assist. This is a standard function. This allows you to you know see where it's sharp, where it's not sharp by looking at all the highlight points. Then there is zebras. So this zebra, you can configure it to whatever level you want to you know, show you the areas that is above your settings. And then there is vector as already loaded here. And then lastly, there's the aspect. So let's say if you want to crop your video to more, a more cinematic aspect like 2.35, 2.39, or some other 69 custom 4.3, whatever aspect you want, uh, this monitor allows you to you know, have show you these gray bars to let you see what is the output like. And there's also, of course, the usual functions like audio meters and you no know, grid lines. They are all built into this monitor. So really, you look at the amount of functions and customizability, this monitor has a lot of them. So if you ask me, it's a very great device for the purpose of on-camera monitoring if you're using a DSLR you know, or entry video camera because a lot of these functions are not available on those devices themselves. So which leads me to the last part of my, very, very last part of my review and this is how I feel and the price itself. First, let's talk about the price. This monitor here can be purchased uh, from SR Revolution today at approximately $590. So if you want to convert that to USD, that is about, if I believe, about 450 USD or lower. So this monitor in terms of pricing is great. The next thing I want to talk about is that, you know, in this price bracket of 500 sing, 500 plus sing dollars, there is really not many competitors. Uh, most of these cheaper competitors uh, do not have as much function. If not, they have a much darker screen or a much lousier screen. And then if you look at, you know, competitors of higher range like the Blackmagic, the Atomos, yes, they have all these functions. They have touch screen, they have onboard recording, but they also cost two to three times the price of this monitor, which is a seven inch version. So if you just really need monitoring tools and a video assist and on camera monitoring, I think this screen is great and good enough for most of your purpose. And probably you can, you know, it's so bright that you can see in any setting other than maybe I don't know, 12 noon sun overhead type of situations. It brings me to the very, very last point is how I feel about this monitor itself. Now, I have used this outdoor and I think the LCD on this monitor, the panel on this monitor is totally fantastic. It's definitely better than my Blackmagic you know, Video Assist itself. Uh, the size and weight is okay. 
the thing is that the F9, uh, F, uh, MP F970 batteries are a bit heavy, but if not, you know, you just have a good mount and I think it's fine for this monitor itself. Um, the only thing I would like you to improve is two things. Firstly, you know, plastic just doesn't feel as uh, premium, even though this, this is not exactly a very, very, very cheap device. Of course, in the video world, 500 plus is okay. You know, it's not too expensive, but you know, the black magic is actually made of metal, so it feels better. And the other thing is, of course, the touch screen, so or the lack of it. So I do hope that they actually implement touch screen, and then I can just select the menus itself rather than going through this joystick here, which requires a bit of practice and memory. And uh, one of my wish lists is of on-screen recording or out of HDMI recording, which this screen doesn't support. Now there's a lot of reason to do it, especially if you are a DSLR shooter or a mirrorless shooter. Uh, a lot of the cameras out there, when they export it out through the HDMI, it does give you a better bit rate. If not, you know, you can have lock, lock output or infinite recording time. So almost uh, most mirrorless cameras, if you want to record videos, do benefit from recording onto an external device. So I really hope that OC do implement it because they lack that in their line. I and that, I think this is a great monitor really. You cannot ask for more for its price range. Bright screen, good screen, decent colors, not too heavy, uh, will provide you accessories like the D-tab plugs. Uh, tons of video assist functions that is useful. Um, ability to load LUTs, I really don't think that there is a downside to it. In fact, my Blackmagic Video Assist has a lot lesser functions than this. And the only one thing that it has that I thought that is quite useful is actually the dual battery slot which allows me to quickly swap between batteries so that the, the, the screen is always up. And that really, what else do you want? I think this is a good price and you know, if you really are looking for an on-camera monitoring device, this may be one of your options. Now, if you do like this review, uh, do press like and then subscribe to my channel. I'll do more of such reviews also in the future and um, I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you. See you next time.